How are you doing today? I'd like to welcome you all to Rock City and welcome Rock City Raptors. My name is John Stokes with Wings to Soar. We hope to entertain as well as educate you here this afternoon and maybe when you leave here you'll have a greater appreciation for birds of prey and the natural world. This is a beautiful little falcon, has a wide range in North America. This little fellow is Gilbert. Gilbert is an American kestrel, K-E-S-T-R-E-L. Some people still call this little bird a sparrow hawk. He's 14 years old. These birds grow very fast. By the time they're 35 days old, they're fully grown. Now, Gilbert and his siblings are turned over to a wildlife center. They determined there they've seen humans too much, so he thinks he's one of us. I hope they're gonna show you how fast he can go from here to there. That's my wife, Dale. I'm gonna see if we can fly Gilbert at least one time for you here. And she's gonna get positioned up there. And here comes Gilbert. We train these birds with positive reward. They fly to us, we give them a little piece of food. Let me see if I can get up here and see if Gilbert will fly to me now. Here he comes. Now the barn owl gets its name because it does indeed nest in barns and silos and other human-made structures. In fact, they're found mostly in the southern part of the United States and some out west. That they don't even have to see their prey to capture it. In fact, these birds can be flying over and capture their prey by hearing alone. Now we're gonna go ahead and fly Bob here for you guys. <laughs> We're going to fly one more time. One more time here for you. Here he comes. Here's a close up for you. It's so quiet. All right. Now, your best opportunity to see owls right around dusk, right around the time it starts to get dark. Go outside, look around. You might see an owl flying by. Well, this is Buddy. He's an eastern screech owl. Oh. When I walk around with him, you'll notice something a little different about his left eye. He's blind in that eye. Unfortunately, Buddy was hit by a car or truck. Believe it or not, it's not uncommon for owls to get hit by vehicles. These birds have 14 cervical vertebrae or neck bones. We have seven. A giraffe has seven neck bones as well. I can turn my head roughly 180 degrees. These birds go 270 to 300 degrees and do so very quickly. <laughs> if you saw a human doing this, be hey, uh, get Father O'Brien on the phone. <laughs> Bill's been repossessed. The screech owl sometimes reluctantly shares his habitat with larger owls. I say reluctantly, you know how big fish eat smaller fish? Big owls eat smaller owls. One coming out eat him, we're getting him out of sight because here comes Artie. Well, I'd like to introduce you to Artie. Now, Artie's what we call a barred owl, spelled B-A-R-R-E-D. And the barn owl gets its name for the bar-like feather pattern it has across his chest. Now, if you live in a wooded area near water, you might have a barred owl as your neighbor. Barred owls love water because they actually eat fish, yeah. amphibians, and crayfish. And they eat plenty of rodents and reptiles as well. Okay, now here's the funny thing about barred owls. They're very social and very curious. Mm -hmm. So if you ever hear a barred owl, no matter how goofy you sound, you can hoot back. Well, barred owls can't help themselves. They're so curious, they'll fly over close to you, check you out to see if you're not a barred owl, and begin carrying on a conversation with you. So you can talk to wild barred owls. So if you ever hear a barred owl hoot, by all means, hoot back. Now we're gonna switch gears a little bit here. We're gonna move to birds that are diurnal, are active during the day. In fact, this next bird coming out is very unique, unlike any other bird of prey in the wild. His name is Zeke. Zeke is a Harris's hawk, and the Harris's hawk is related to the red-tailed hawk that you commonly see beside highways and interstates during the fall and winter. There's also a new interesting thing called stacking, just like what it sounds like, like a can of Pringles. And you think of stacking, a lot of times these birds, will, the first bird lands on top of a cactus, will have another one land on that one's back. Yet again, another one. Sometimes you have five to seven birds all stacked on each other's backs, all are looking in different directions. A lot of eyes out there watching for food, and that helps them once again uh, survive in a harsh environment. Zeke can read, he can read a stop sign from a mile away. He can independently focus his eyes. He can be flying along, watch something on the ground with his left eye, watch another bird fly beside his right eye at the same time, and focus straight ahead. What we have next? A bird with a little bit of an image problem. Dale's introduced you to Casey. Miss Casey the Vulture Diva, here she is in all her glory. Odd wingspan, these birds love to soar. Whoa! <laughs> An uprising more better. <laughs> Told you she has an attitude. Casey nipping at John there, actually biting the heck out of John. That's called pecking order. Since Casey thinks she's human, she's decided that John is beneath her in the pecking order. But she doesn't peck him, she does bite the heck out of him. Which I think is kind of funny, actually. <laughs> so nature has given the vulture a very creative way to protect itself 
something we refer to as projectile vomiting. A potential attacker gets too close and they simply puke in the attacker's face. Now their vulture vomit is so gross that generally after getting a face load of this, the attacker will run away and puke as well. Hello. He's now 40 years old. 38 years ago he was shot. His left wing was severely damaged and required removal to save his life. Hard to believe anyone would be cruel enough to shoot a bird like this. It's illegal to kill any birds of prey. He's also blind in his left eye. His other name, the American Eagle. It's been our national symbol since 1782. He lives near water, and eats mostly fish. We occasionally dine upon some other things as well, such as various waterfowl, reptiles, mammals, sometimes dead animals. Bill's one of the largest nests of any bird a couple nests found last century, weighed over 4,000 pounds. The bald eagle's four to five years of age and matures and finds its lifelong mate. And once they get together, they'll go about the task of building their nest. And once that's completed, one to three eggs are laid, which are incubated by both adults. After 30 to 40 days, the eggs hatch and the young grow very fast. A tiny little bird to a fully grown eagle, only 12 weeks. At this point, they make their first flights. Sadly, if any young hatch in any year, only about half make it to their second spring. Over the last 40 years, the bald eagle's made a phenomenal comeback. From a low of only 417 nesting pairs in the lower 48 states in the early 1970s to over 71,000 nesting pairs today in that same area. These birds have overcome such difficulties as illegal shootings, habitat destruction, air and water pollution, and eggshell pitting due to pesticide. The pesticide was banned in 1972 to protect the air and water better protected their habitat. In places where eagles were wiped out, young eagles were released. Those that made it to adulthood came back and reestablished bald eagle populations by 2007, this bird was doing so well, it's taken off the endangered species list. The fact this bird has come back tells me something, folks. If we all care enough about something, we can save it. It's up to everybody here to do a little something to help out our home, planet Earth. We can do some simple things, too, like recycle the trash or conserve energy, turn a light off in a room with no one's in there. The old saying goes, we did not inherit to serve from our parents, but simply borrow them from our children. We would like to thank you all for coming and spending part of your Saturday with us here at Rock City. We'd like to bring this program to your school organization to take a photo of that sign right there. If you'd like to donate the wings and sword, and money goes to help the birds. And I'd like to thank my wife and co-host, Dale Kernahan, and once again, thank you all for coming out. Please be safe on your travels home. Thank you.